Salt is not just for dinner. It may be the next quiet revolution in home power. For years, lithium has ruled batteries, but sodium is everywhere, cheap and hard to corner. Now, sodium ion packs are leaving the lab and turning up on real walls, running real heat pumps and charging real cars. A company called Eleven Energy is showing the tech in everyday use, alongside software that times charging like a trader. This script breaks down how sodium ion works, why it can handle cold better, how much energy it stores, and how smart tariffs can turn a battery into savings. From the periodic table to the power wall. A sodium ion battery works like a lithium ion battery in one key way. A charged ion moves between the cathode and the anode as the battery charges and discharges. The difference is the ion itself. Sodium replaces lithium. The name 11 energy hints at why. Sodium's atomic number is 11, meaning its nucleus holds 11 protons. Lithium's atomic number is 3, and its atoms can pack more densely. That is one reason lithium packs usually reach higher energy density. Numbers make the trade-off clear. Lithium iron phosphate, LFP, is often around 140 to 190 Wall HKV dry. Nickel manganese cobalt, NMC, can be around 240 to 350 Wall HKC8. Sodium ion today is often around 100 to 160 Wall HKT. For an electric car, that gap can limit range because less energy fits in the same space. For home storage, space matters less. One working setup uses a 9kW8 battery made from two 4.5 kWh modules and a 6kW inverter, sized for a roof with lots of solar and a heat pump. Even with sodium's lower density, the cabinet is only about 10 to 15% larger than a similar lithium unit. In many homes, that extra volume is a fair swap for other benefits. System sizing is usually driven by daily use. Installers often advise matching storage to what the home consumes over a full day. That way, even on a grey day with weak solar, the battery can still cover normal demand without constantly running empty. A typical household might use around 9 to 10 kWa in a day, so a 9 kWa battery can be a sensible starting point, especially when paired with strong solar generation. Cold mornings and karma chemistry. Sodium ion has advantages that show up in winter. In many lithium ion batteries, the electrolyte thickens as temperatures approach freezing. When it starts to gel, it becomes less fluid, and ions struggle to move in and out of the electrodes performance drops, and charging slows. To avoid that, many lithium home batteries use internal heaters to keep cells warm overnight. Those heaters consume energy just to maintain readiness, which can feel like wasting power to guard power. A sodium ion pack can avoid much of that loss by using a different electrolyte mix. In the installation described, the cells can operate down to about minus 20 degrees Celsius. That broad temperature range matters because more systems are being installed outdoors, where overnight cold is common. With less need for heating, the system can be simpler and more efficient, and more of the stored electricity can go to the home instead of the battery itself. Sodium ion can also be designed with a higher nominal voltage, and it often handles a broader operating window without the same stress that some lithium chemistries face at the edges. Heat is still managed but the chemistry is generally less fussy about being kept in a narrow comfort zone. For stationary storage, where reliability across seasons matters more than shaving centimetres off a box, boring predictability is a win. Deeper discharge, longer life. Another important difference is how deeply the battery can safely discharge. Being able to empty a pack is useful for transport safety because a depleted battery carries less stored energy. In a home, a system still keeps a small amount of charge so the inverter can detect and manage the battery. But the lower the cutoff, the more usable energy comes out of the same cabinet. To reach that lower cutoff, the sodium system uses an inverter setup that can run at a lower bottom end voltage than many lithium focused units. In everyday use, the pack can fall to about 8% remaining before the system calls it empty. Many lithium home batteries hold back 15-20% to as a reserve. So even if the sodium box is slightly larger, it can deliver a similar usable amount each cycle. 
deep cycling also affects lifespan. Sodium ion tends to be comfortable with being taken low and charged again, while many lithium packs age faster if they are repeatedly flattened. That can translate into a higher cycle life for households that cycle daily. Pricing is still evolving. Installed cost in the UK depends on system size and whether solar is included, but a typical range for home systems is roughly £3,000 to £10,000. A key factor is the current 0% VAT on home batteries, which reduces the headline price. At the wholesale level, sodium packs can be close to lithium today, but scale manufacturing is expected to push sodium lower over time. A household learns to think in seasons. Living with a home battery can change behavior without demanding constant attention. After almost a year with a sodium ion system, one household reported that it simply worked. The bigger change was in mindset. Sunny periods became a chance to store and export. Winter became the season where stored value mattered most, especially with a heat pump increasing electricity demand. Storage made it easier to think about energy on a yearly cycle, not just day by day. The wider UK market is still early. Around 100,000 home battery installations have been recorded so far, a small share of roughly 24 million dwellings. Even so, installs are rising, helped by the VAT break and by growing familiarity among installers. Solar pairing is a major driver. With solar alone, a home might use only about 30% of what it generates. Adding a battery can lift self-consumption toward 80%. That increase is often linked with annual bill savings, quoted at around £400 to £600, depending on demand and tariff. It also explains why many battery installs happen alongside solar. Batteries can still be useful without panels, thanks to smart tariffs. Cheap off-peak electricity can be stored and used during peak hours, and in some cases, exported back to the grid. That price shifting, often called arbitrage, can significantly speed up payback because the battery is earning value twice, once by avoiding expensive imports, and again by selling power when the grid needs it. When software turns kilowatts into money. A second installation shows the scale up. Instead of 9kWh, the system is 36kWh, built from 8 4.5kW modules, with plans to expand to 72kDWh. The aim is full electrification, cars, heating and all household power, with no gas. The strategy is to charge overnight at a cheap rate, run the home during the day and export any remaining energy at peak prices. Even export rates that look small, such as around 10 pence per KTOL WH, can add up across a year when the battery is large and cycled often. This approach depends on a smart energy management platform. The household enters its tariff, and the software can read upcoming rates from suppliers such as Octopus. It also uses the system's location, captured during installation, to pull local weather forecasts. By combining tomorrow's forecast with past patterns, it estimates solar output and household demand, then schedules when to charge and when to discharge. On highly variable tariffs, it can update the plan as prices change. On tariffs with fixed windows, it can still adapt as winter turns to spring and summer, without homeowners constantly changing timers. Extra sensors sharpen the forecast. Plug-in monitors can track appliances like washing machines and tumble dryers. Other sensors can read an EV charger and a heat pump. That reveals not only total use, but what is using it. If tomorrow is forecast to be colder than today, more energy can be reserved for heating. If the forecast is bright, more capacity can be left open for midday solar. Tariffs can even flip the usual solar logic. On some plans, overnight electricity can cost about half of the daytime export payment. In that case, the battery can charge from the grid at night, and most solar can be exported during the day. If midday solar exceeds export limits, the system can discharge a little in advance, creating space to capture extra generation, then release it later when export is possible again. Around the world, sodium ion is already moving. In China, Katiel and Heiner are producing cells for storage and vehicles. 
In the US, Natron Energy targets high power uses, such as data centers. In Europe, grid-scale projects are appearing in Switzerland and Germany. The UK has its own pioneers too, including Eleven Energy, Ferradion, and Lina Energy. Many cells are still imported, but the raw ingredient is plentiful locally. Cheshire's Winsford Mine produces rock salt for roads, and Brinefields supply the chemical industry, creating chlorine, soda ash, and caustic soda used in plastics and glass. That same humble supply chain could help build cleaner, homegrown energy storage. Sodium ion will not replace lithium everywhere. Cars still reward the lightest, densest cells that can be squeezed into a floor pack. But homes play by different rules. A stationary battery must be safe, durable, and calm through the cold nights and summer peaks. Sodium's abundance, deep cycling tolerance, and low temperature performance make it a strong candidate. Add software that watches tariffs, weather, and major loads, and each kilowatt hour can be steered towards the best value. As factories scale, prices can drop. Then, everyday salt may help store everyday clean energy. If that happens, storage becomes cheaper, local, and easier to trust.